Hi, my name is Matt Holliday, and welcome back to my class on Programming in Go. In this section, I'm going to talk about code coverage tools in Go. So I've talked about unit testing, and now I want to show how you can use the unit testing to actually generate some code coverage information. Not just numbers, but we'll actually be able to see it graphically in a very neat tool that Go provides. Okay, so there's an example I showed earlier when I talked about reflection. I had a program that I want to reuse, and it's this program that allows me to check and see whether a certain piece of JSON is found inside of another one. Okay, um, the actual program had these functions like match num and match string, all right, and then we had this more complicated one contains because it's looking to see is part of an object contained in another object. Right? And they were all driven by something called check data, which says, hey, you know, unmarshal these two strings and then see whether or not this logic works, right? the containment logic. And now I'm going to show you the tests that show an example of that. Okay, so if I go to main test, all right, here's a little piece of JSON. I'm going to pretend I got it back from the Internet. Right? I went out to some service, a microservice or some other provider, and I'm getting back this blob of JSON, okay? And, you know, if I were using this for real, I'd be saying, well, is certain things inside of it? And so I have a couple of unit tests, right? And they're both table-driven, but they're not subtests. The first one is, does it contain? So these are the things that I expect to pass, okay? Right? Um, if I just look at these, like, oh, does it have ID with the value 1? Yeah, it will do that. Right, extra name, address with an object. Those things will all be found. Okay, I have another test down here called not contains, and I expect these things minus those two. <clears throat> I expect these things not to be found. Right, so I have some positive tests and some negative tests, and that should drive the code coverage. Now, how do we do code coverage? And the answer is. We run go test with a tool. So I need to, uh, let's make sure I'm in the right spot. All right, the first thing I can do is I can just run go test and it's going to come back and say, yeah, it worked. Okay. So the next thing I can do is run that with the dash cover option. And it will come back and say, you hit 85% of the statements. Well, that's not bad. Let's see where they are. And to see where they are, I'm going to add a couple more options. In addition to cover, or actually in place of cover, I'm going to say cover profile. And that will cause it to take some information and put it into a file. Okay. The other thing I want to do is I'm going to give it an option that allows it to figure out like how many times were certain statements hit. So not just were they hit, but how many times. And it will give us actually a heat map. We'll see a heat map of code coverage, which is kind of neat. Okay, so I'm going to run that. And if I do a list now, I'm going to have this C dot out, which I expect when I look at it, it's not going to be terribly informative to me. Okay, but it's going to be used. And the way we're going to use it is we're going to run another tool called go tool cover. Okay? And I'm going to use it in a browser. So I'm going to bring it up in a browser and see it graphically. We can look here and see. If we look up on top here, and I'm going to let's see if I can boost this up. Yeah, there we go. All right. So red is no coverage, low coverage, bright green is high coverage, and we can kind of see on these statements what we got to. Now, there's a couple things down here about, you know, like the JSON just doesn't decode, and I'm going to skip those. Okay, I'm not interested in testing the JSON decoder in that sense. But what I notice here, if I look at my function contains, and I look at the code in it, right, it had a case for floats and strings, and then it has a case for object, and that had a three-way if statement, and two of those are not covered. Okay. Well, that's something I could. I can improve my code coverage, and I can improve my, my testing, okay, because code coverage is just a way to help you improve your testing, okay, not a goal of its own, right, by finding a couple more test cases that would cover this. So, 
let me skip back here. Well, actually, let's go take a look. So what is this first one, right? And the first one says I've got a key missing. All right. So if I added a test here that said, and it has to be a key for something that's going to be a, an object. So I think this will work. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to look for something called city. And it's, I'm looking for city, and it's supposed to be an object. And I need a comma right there. <coughs> and it's not there. So let's do this again. We'll do that. Make it bigger. And now if I come down here and look, yes, I've managed to hit that. Okay, I'm not hitting a lot, but it, it is hitting it. It's no longer red. Okay, and the other case is the case where the key is there, but the key is not an object. Oh, okay. So I think I know how to solve that one. Right? Um, I need to just look for some other thing here. And so I think I can take that same line, just change it, but put a key that is actually in my unknown. Right? So there is a key with name that will be found, but it has the wrong type. It's a string in the real data as opposed to I want it to be an object in my test data. <coughs> right? So notice we went from like 85 to 88. And if I do this again, we're going to get to 92. Now I look at contains, and contains at least has gray if not green, and so I no longer have the red that says I didn't get there at all. So I'll just summarize with this slide, right? Go test cover will tell you how much, and then we can put a couple of other options on here, and we actually get a heat map and pull that heat map up in the web browser, and that's really, really neat because that gives you an easy way to look at your code and just look for the red marks, the red marks, and then you can try to evaluate, do I want to try to cover? Chances are, once you've got a significant number of unit tests, the red marks are going to be error cases. Some of them will be easy to reproduce. Some of them you'll look at and just say, hey, you know what? Um, that's going to be too hard, and I'm just not going to go there. It's your choice. Okay? I don't think trying to get to 100% makes sense if it means you've got to do weird things in your code. And again, like I said, 100% code coverage does not mean your code works. And it will give you a false sense of security if you're aiming for the 100% and saying, yes, I got 100%, I'm good. So that's my very short segment on code coverage. I just want to actually do that live, demonstrate the code, running the tests, and bring it up in the tool, because I think this is something a lot of people are not maybe aware of, and it's a very powerful tool for getting a feeling for what are your unit tests helping you find, and what, how you can improve them.